It's been quite a while since we've talked about the central black hole Sagittarius A star, and in the last few months or so, there's actually been a few major discoveries coming from the center of the galaxy, specifically focusing on that central black hole, discovering and confirming a few important features about the black hole, possibly helping us understand why it's the way it is and why it's so different from everything else. Because as you probably know based on observations from other black holes, Sagittarius A star is surprisingly quiet, surprisingly small, possibly even making Milky Way galaxy somewhat unique compared to everything else. And so, hello on full person, this is Anton, let's talk about some of the recent discoveries about Sagittarius A star once again, briefly discuss its history and how all of this was discovered, and of course talk about why this is somewhat important. But I guess first let's start with the image released a couple of years ago. You might have already seen this, this was the image released by the Event Horizon Telescope after 5 years of analysis and after 5 years of observations, and to some extent this shows us the region around the black hole, and it's that dark region in the middle that's essentially where the black hole is probably hiding. But when it comes to the central black hole in the Milky Way, it's actually really surprising that we even managed to find it, because it is very well hidden. Hidden by a massive amount of gas in the center of the galaxy, and just by the fact that there are billions of different stars out there producing all sorts of emissions. But intriguingly, back in 1974, a couple of young astronomers, Bruce Balick and Robert Brown, who you see right here, although obviously they don't actually look young here anymore, because this picture was taken 30 years later, were essentially conducting some of their first investigations in radio astronomy of various regions in the constellation of Sagittarius. They were actually looking at a star-forming region, Sagittarius B, but completely by accident and because they were curious, decided to also point their telescope at Sagittarius A. And to their surprise they discovered an enormously bright radio object. So bright and so unusual that they basically just put an asterisk next to its name, and so it became known as Sagittarius A star. In this case, this was technically a completely accidental discovery. But back then, because this was still the beginning of radio astronomy, and also because they were still very young and still basically just starting, they didn't really want to, I guess, ruffle the feathers. They did not want to make any extraordinary claims, even though they kind of had a hunch on what this was, and they didn't even want to publish anything about it, because they didn't really know where all of this goes. And as they mentioned in one of their interviews, the decision here was more political, not really scientific, and it wasn't until the 1990s and additional observations in the infrared and submillimeter wavelengths that more and more evidence started to come out that there is something exceptionally concentrated right in the middle. Moreover, that something had a lot of stars around it, and many of them exhibited unusual orbital pattern. You can actually see some of it right here. And so by 1990s, the researchers started to collectively measure the motion of these stars trying to figure out what's actually happening. And by roughly 2008 or so, they had about 20 years of observations being able to plot the orbits of these so-called S stars. You can learn more about these stars in some of the videos in the description. The most famous one, the one that you see in the middle, is S2. It orbits every 16 years and comes as close to the center as 120 astronomical units away, basically a distance of approximately 4 times as far as Neptune is from the Sun. And as more observations were conducted, more of these stars started to be discovered. And some of them were actually extreme. One of them, S4714, once again a video in the description describes it more, comes within 12.6 astronomical units and moves at approximately 8% of the speed of light. And all of these observations meant only one thing, something very massive, something very compact and invisible right in the center. Which eventually resulted in several major papers with very strong claims that this is the central supermassive black hole, the claim in the studies that eventually resulted in a Nobel Prize in 2020. And so naturally, once we knew that this is a supermassive black hole, someone had to take a picture of it. I mean obviously to confirm that it's there, but also to see what we can see. But for that, the scientists needed something a little bit bigger than any previous telescope. They actually needed a telescope possibly the size of planet Earth. And that idea was kicking around for quite a few years and eventually became known as the Event Horizon Telescope. A large array of telescopes, consisting of the telescopes you see right here, all collecting data from the same point at the same time, which is then collected and analyzed in order to reconstruct a single image. Which is pretty much exactly how this was created and later on resulted in the image of Sagittarius A star as well. Although here obviously this was just the image of a lot of radio emissions coming from around the black hole and not the black hole itself, 
This was not in optical light, this was not in infrared, these were radio observations. Just showing us that there is a lot of radioactivity in the central region around here, but obviously not telling us much more. But since that image, the researchers were actually kind of curious to find out what else we can see here by using other frequencies. For example, by using polarized light and by also using X-ray emissions coming from this region. And so here the researchers used the now-retired SOFIA telescope, which was an airplane-based telescope, extremely good at observing polarized light, and also NASA's Chandra X-ray observatory, which I think NASA is going to be retiring soon as well. Yeah, that's not actually good for scientific observations, but we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos. Subscribe! Anyway, one of the more recent images taken by the Event Horizon Telescope, not from our galaxy, was the image you see right here. This was the observations from a very famous and very active galaxy known as Perseus A, a galaxy 230 million light years away from us that basically produced evidence for an extremely ordered magnetic field, and a magnetic field that extended all the way through the black hole and even past it. More importantly, it presented evidence for what the researchers referred to as magnetically arrested disk, or essentially here, the magnetic field was so extremely powerful that it technically had more effects than gravity. And so the combination of magnetic field lines combined with the spin of the black hole forced these magnetic lines to be so twisted, basically becoming a kind of a driving force responsible for launching extremely powerful jets. Although that's something that was already suspected previously, and here we just had more confirmation. But by observing this around this black hole, and by also discovering a lot of orderly magnetic fields around M87 black hole as well, here the researchers wanted to find out if something similar exists around Sagittarius A star as well. Especially because there were hints of this coming from the SOFIA telescope that was able to reveal huge magnetic fields surrounding the ring of gas and dust that seems to orbit Sagittarius A star. But even more intriguingly, there were hints that this magnetic field prevents all of this gas from falling into the black hole and from essentially activating it. So once again, a kind of a magnetic arrest, or prevention of activity by the magnetic field itself. And so, well, just a few days ago from when I'm making this video, there was finally a new and I guess the strongest confirmation so far. The confirmation of very strong magnetic fields around the black hole, twisted and organized into an extremely powerful magnetic field, extremely close to the center of the black hole. And so this iconic image that you see right here has now been redone in polarized light. It sort of looks like this now, and that looks super cool. Here this essentially represents very powerful magnetic lines that seem to surround the black hole and seem to control a lot of motion around it. Something that we always suspected, but something that has only now been officially proven. With the black hole itself being right there. This incredible video was recently released by the European Southern Observatory. And because this polarized light seems to be very similar to what we observed from other black holes, including M87, although maybe not as powerful as around M87, all of this basically implies that this seems to play a major role in controlling the flow of gas around black holes. And the magnetic field itself is most likely formed by all of this matter, specifically ionized matter, orbiting around the black hole. So it's a kind of a self-feeding and self-controlling mechanism. Although here, some of the previous observations imply that not all of the magnetic field is produced this way. At least some of this field is produced by something entirely different. It's not entirely clear what yet, but it might have something to do with other properties of the black hole. For example, its spin. And that's actually something that comes from a slightly different study from just a month ago. In this case, this particular study focused on different frequencies. They tried to combine X-ray observations with radio wave observations. And they did this in order to establish the overall mass of the black hole again, in order to then calculate its spin, or essentially how fast the black hole is spinning. And turns out, it is spinning really fast approximately 60% of the maximum possible value, with that maximum value basically being the speed of light. And so because of this, it also obviously pulls the space-time around itself and forms what we refer to as the Kerr black hole. A black hole you can learn more about in one of the videos in the description, but essentially it's no longer really a sphere. It kind of resembles, I guess, some kind of an egg or a football and starts to possess different properties. And because it actually pulls the space-time around itself really, really fast, this affects everything around the black hole, all of the matter in its orbit, and thus produces a lot of additional effects including potentially extra magnetic fields. But more importantly, spinning black holes generally produce a lot of energy if something does interact with them. 
So for example, if suddenly there's a star falling into this black hole, it's going to release a tremendous amount of energy, way more than a non-spinning black hole. But once again, strangely enough, here the magnetic fields seem to actually prevent this from happening. They seem to prevent the motion of the gas from approaching the black hole right now, which basically results in Sagittarius A star for some reason being extremely quiet, at least in the last few thousands of years. We know that based on previous observations from, for example, Fermi bubbles, it was very loud at some point. But compared to other galaxies, our galaxy seems to be very quiet. And so in essence, the combination of the spin and very powerful magnetic fields seem to basically control everything around central black holes. And in the case of Sagittarius A star, they seem to also create very quiet, very mild conditions. And are also most likely the reason why the black hole in the center of Milky Way galaxy is actually much smaller compared to other galaxies of similar size and similar mass. So for example, M87 black hole is over a thousand times more massive than the one in the Milky Way. But because these powerful emissions also usually transform galaxies and can even stop star formation in general, in some sense maybe the Milky Way galaxy kind of got lucky. And maybe one of the reasons we have stars like our Sun in existence around the Milky Way is because of these very specific properties of the black hole in the center. And so if the black hole was just a little bit more active or possibly had less spin or less magnetic fields, it could have been way more active and could have been producing a lot more galactic winds thus stopping star formation and potentially transforming the Milky Way into something different. And so definitely some really important confirmations and really important discoveries. But we're about to have more, because in April of 2024, the team behind the Event Horizon Telescope is going to start observing the black hole once again. And so in the next few months, we might hear about some additional discoveries, and some might even surprise us more. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, Come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.